donation of RPL raises funds, presents programs, supports special projects, helps to create specialized spaces, and purchases supplemental materials and equipment for the Rochester Public Library. In the last six years, since the summer of 2016, FFRPL has allocated $4.5 million to the Rochester Public Library. In recent years, FFRPL has also helped present and promote hundreds of library programs, exhibits, and resources. And we've helped support the creation and revitalization of many library spaces, such as the Lincoln Branch Reconfiguration, Central's Children's Center, the Arnett Branch Mural Project, the Rundell Terrace Revitalization Project, and Central's Technology Center, as well as 11,000 square feet of space dedicated to youth services, including the Imagine You space we'll hear about later today. We thank all of our individual donors, as well as the many foundation, corporate, and government sponsors who make our work possible. Our thanks also go to the dedicated FFRPL committee members who curate and organize these events, our guest speakers and artists who so graciously share their time and talents with us, the library staff who help with our setup and production, and the thousands of people who attend throughout the year. Our Tuesday topic series this winter focuses on some of the many important but lesser known services and resources that the library provides to our community. Before we introduce our speaker, we'd like to remind you that the library has many interesting programs this month, including Central's Black Film Festival, Local History's Morning in the Morning Talk on the Underground Railroad, and a unique 60-year retrospective of the NASA Space Program. You can find information on all these programs and more on the library's website at rockcitylibrary.org. Our presenter today is Jeff Bostick, Central Library's Digital Media Associate for the Imagine You Digital Media Learning Lab. Jeff will give us an overview of the lab's major components, including music production, video production, digital art, photography, and esports. Please join me in welcoming Jeff to our podium. Hello. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, as she said, today I'm going to do a overview of um, what we do in our lab, um, things that we can provide to our teens and our communities uh, and our educators uh, around Rochester. Um, so uh, as she already told you, music production, video production, photography, and digital art, uh, and also esports. Um, those are not everything we do. We are also going to be getting our virtual reality back up and running soon. Um, and I don't focus on our Glowforge, our laser engraving, too much in here, but we do have that available as well. Um, quick notice, I was asked to do a quick three-minute video on my lab before, and it ended up being 12 minutes. So I'm going to try to make sure this is uh, 25 minutes. Um, but don't hold it against me if we go a little bit over. Um, so starting off with music production, um, music production is probably my weakest part of, of the lab um, as far as my experience. Um, but that's why we have Wicked Squid Studios. We're partnered with Wicked Squid Studios, um, and those guys are great. Um, they really know their stuff. Um, they come in once a month to do certification. Um, so our, our professional lab, you've got to be certified to use it. It's a quick two-hour class. Um, and those guys will take you through the hardware, the software. Um, they'll show you the templates that they have for you to use. Um, any questions you have, um, they, they've got the answers for you. Uh, and then also for, for teens and students, they, have, they can do private lessons at, at their studio. Um, so this, they're a great resource for us. Um, they actually just did a, a certification on Monday. Um, so if you're, you have anybody interested in music, uh, anybody that, that needs to use a studio for free, um, that needs to get advice, that needs to, um, you know, get connected with professional music, musicians, um, Wicked Squid Studios and, and coming up here, that's a great resource for you. Um, music lessons and fun. Uh, uh, I also don't want to forget to mention podcasts. We actually have um, a couple of people that have done podcasts from our studio, uh, including, uh, I believe it's the Felsden Files. Uh, uh, two ladies that work at the library started doing a podcast. Um, but to make sure we keep these, uh, the presentation interesting, I uh, gave you guys a couple of examples. This first one 
Uh, I worked with a young lady who wanted to remix um, a nursery rhyme, so let's take a listen. Mary had a little what? Ram. Mary had a little what? Ram. Huh. Go Mary. Go Mary. Go Mary. Hey, hey, hey. What's down? Hey, hey. Uh. I'm tired of this lamb in my house. I'm about to eat lamb chops tonight. Switch it up. Hey. Miss hey, Mary. Mac, Mac, Mac. All dressed in black, hey, black, hey, black, hey. with silver buttons, 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 all oh, oh. down her back, back, back. Oh, oh. Go Mary, go Mary, go Mary, go Mary, go Mary, go Mary. <laughs> all right, so that was one of our um, a contest we actually did. Um, so we did that. I did that with the uh, a hillside group, um, and the reason this picture is on the screen is because with our software that we use, um, not airplane mode, with our software that we use, you can actually um, help kids create beats and music by using loops. Uh, and if you look at the descriptions, um, you can pick your instruments, you can pick your genres, and then you can also pick your descriptors. Um, so for things like uh, dialectical behavioral therapy, um, you know, other kind of music therapies, um, you can get into these programs and you know start working with how people feel happiness, um, you know through certain types of sounds, um, how people can feel sadness. Working with trailers um, to make people get excited. Um, so the the loops are uh, really a good tool for um, you know learning. Uh, and then uh, at Wicked Switch Studios, Josh Pettinger is the the uh, owner, um, and he's originally a uh, drummer so he also taught a beat seminar um, and we can take a listen to one of the beats uh, a student made after taking the the seminar or we can't take a listen let's see <laughs> uh oh All right, so we won't be listening to the beat. Um, let's move on to video production. Um, so in our lab, we have a bunch of video equipment. We have a cinema camera. Um, we have the DSLR cameras, um, as well as tripods, jibs. We have the tripod dollies. So pretty much any kind of look that you would like to get, um, professional look, um, you know, simple things. We can do those in our lab. Um, I'm not sure why I'm having technical difficulties. Um, but that equipment is all available. It's not available to rent, but it is, you are able to use it. I think we're saving questions for the end. Um, this must be, OK. I think airplane mode was on. I'm going to try to refresh this really quickly and get us back into it. There we go. Yep, so video production, we've done things like music videos, uh, promotional videos, highlights, documentaries. Um, I've seen kids come in and within three hours they've recorded a song and they've also shot a music video for it. Um, you know, we have younger kids that, you know, don't really think it's possible. Uh, they come talk to me, uh, they say, can we shoot a music video here? I'm like, sure, let's record something, let's shoot it. Uh, you know, we can get those things done pretty quickly and they go home with something on YouTube or something on their phone that they can show all their friends and then their friends all come running and want a video or they want to do something cool as well. Um, so let's take a look at some of those. 
Uh, this first one is a little intro that a student did. He was planning on uh, entering this into a contest. So he was going to do a commentary kind of on what was going on uh, in the world. Uh, this was during the time of COVID and George, George Floyd and uh, all those kind of things. Um, and so he made that video as kind of like a precursor to what he wanted to upload on his YouTube channel. Um, he's been a great asset for us in, in doing work around the community with, you know, helping uh, organizations that want to get teen input uh, through video or, or photo or digital media. Um, we can also skip around and check out the beginning of the Frederick Douglass Sister City video he did for us. Um, we won't be able, probably won't be able to watch the whole thing, but we'll take a look at it. When it is finally ours, this freedom, this liberty, this beautiful and terrible thing, needful to man as air, usable as earth, when it belongs at last to all, when it is truly instinct, brain matter, diastole, system, reflex action, when it is finally won, when it is more than the gaudy mumble jumbo of politicians, this man, this Douglas, this former slave, this Negro beaten to his knees, Exile, visioning a world where none is lonely, none haunted, alien. This man, superb in love and logic, this man shall be remembered. Oh, not with statuous rhetoric, not with legends and poems and wreaths of bronze alone, but with the lives grown out of his life, the lives fleshing his dream of a beautiful, needful thing. at a time like this. So that's just an intro of our video for our sister city in Krakow, Poland. Um, obviously that young man is very talented. Um, came through for us doing that video. Um, and then uh, the last two are two of my favorite videos. Last year we entered the Digis, the digital um, festival for students around Rochester. Um, and we had a third grader win first place for her secret room virtual tour. And this was actually filmed by her brother in fifth grade. So I didn't really have anything to do with this and except for helping them edit. Uh, so let's check this one out. Hi everybody, I'm Queen Nora and I will be showing you the secret room that we have at the Rochester Public Library. And I'm having this time in here with me. Hello, thanks for being here. What are we going to look at today, Miss Queen? We're going to be looking at the secret room, so let's go in. Isn't this cool, everyone? It's a new secret room. I don't know what this is, but it looks like a video game. Miss Tanya. Oh. oh. So there's over 60 different games that you can play with this gaming system. Oh, so For kids of all ages. Ooh, this is very cool. All right, we will stop that. In the last video, um, in 2020, when COVID hit, we were shut down in April. Um, 
in March, we did a contest for um, to add uh, lightning to your videos, um, but we never got to vote on it. Um, this kid had won the February contest um, to add fire to your videos, the fire um, effects to your videos. Um, he was probably going to win our lightning um, video before we got shut down. Um, and sadly, uh, two months after getting shut down, he was, uh, you know, he was a victim of gun violence. Um, so I, I love this video. I wish he had, we had been able to vote on it, um, but let's check it out. Very talented kid. Uh, like I said, he definitely would have won the March contest. Um, but let's move on to our next topic, photography and digital art. So I combine these um, because both of these are kind of manipulating, you know, what you see. Uh, we have the DSLR cameras. Uh, we have the Wacom tablet for drawing. Uh, if you go up to the uh, Media Lab, uh, our ceiling is covered with a bunch of drawings that kids have done. Um, a lot of them are very, very talented kids. Um, there are some very detailed drawings. And the Wacom tablet, uh, if you've ever been on it, you can do pretty much anything you can imagine. You can turn your own drawings into stencils and color in between the lines. Um, you can do layers. You can do a whole bunch of things. And then with your regular photos um, with Photoshop, you can do pretty much anything you can imagine as well. Um, you know, Photoshop's pretty well known. Uh, so if we go to our next slide, we can take a look. Um, on our left, we have a picture of a kid walking across, uh, kind of like the, the platform coming from Teen Center. Um, so we have the first, uh, the picture, the regular picture of him walking across, and then with Photoshop, we're able to kind of make it look like a bridge going over lava with a sky that's some kind of volcano maybe going off in the background. Uh, and then the other two pictures, we have girls working in a photo booth. Um, so in the lab, you can use a backdrop. We have green screens. We have blue screen. Uh, we have a black and white screen. Uh, we have a ring camera. And then, of course, our DSLRs can hook directly to our IMAX. Um, so you can take a picture with a tethered camera and edit it you know, right in Adobe Lightroom, switch it to Photoshop. You know, all that kind of stuff is available to the kids, and they really they really enjoy doing it. Um, some kids don't like getting their, their pictures taken, but most kids like editing pictures and you know, making people's eyes look bigger, things like that. Uh, and then we go to the artist. So the, like I said, the ceiling art, um, we can do logos there with Adobe Illustrator, uh, and then the laser engravings on our Glowforge. Um, so we have the artist that did, uh, I think she called it Anime Boy. Um, and then with the Glowforge, if you draw something with the Glowforge, you can actually put it in the Glowforge, have the Glowforge take a picture of it, and then use that picture to do your laser engraving. So if you check out this one right here, this little demon, whatever it was, the kid colored it and drew and wrote his name underneath, and then we actually put it on keychains for him. Um, we have some kids that designed their name, um, and we printed those out on leather wristbands. Um, and then this one, is a logo done for uh, a young woman that wanted to sell kind of fragrances. Um, and when people come, come to me for logos, sometimes they don't think it'll be um, high quality, but with we're using the same things that the professionals use. Um, so this, she was able to design, um, you know, kind of part of a woman, um, and then the other part uh, be kind of like a flowery kind of thing with a cloud in the background. So she, got, she was very happy with this and, you know, took these cards with her to, um, I believe, New York City to start selling fragrances. All right, and then our newest thing, 
uh, is eSports. Um, so in June, I made a proposal for the anti-violence initiative that was going on in the city um, to bring eSports into the library. Um, and that was, you know, get kids in because I was seeing that with our computers that we already had, our kids were stopping, um, you know, everybody would stop, everybody would want to play. Um, we can get kids attention for hours. Um, so what we did um, was we got a, a six person set up uh, up in the library. We got, um, you know, the best computers possible. We got curved monitors um, and then we got streaming equipment and other uh, fancy stuff. Um, courtesy of Frontier Communications, they were doing an initiative and, uh, you know, they really helped us out. Um, so eSports at the library um, can provide you with competitive gaming, um, professional development, STEM curriculum, and streaming. Um, so I'll talk about a little bit about each of, the, uh, each of these. So uh, competitive gaming um, and contests, we do, we actually did the, um, the Farmcraft um, challenge where the creators of Farmcraft, they made a video um, showing themselves playing the game, um, farming in different climates, um, and your score is the total amount of money you make selling your crops um, and the condition of the climate. Um, and our kids were able to, to beat that score, and they actually just received last week, uh, well, five days ago, um, they received uh, custom skins for, for beating that score. Um, professional development, uh, we have AGN in Rochester, a gamer's nostalgia. They're a, kind of a professional um, community of games. They host big, big national tournaments. Um, and they've been here, they put on a Tekken tournament in December. Um, and you know, they, they work with our kids and are gonna let our kids, you know, help with the events, um, help with like broadcasting, shoutcasting those events. So we have kids as young as 14 that have already been um, at live events doing commentating. Um, you know, things that can really help them in the future professionally if they want to become journalists, if they want to do professional shoutcasting, um, they're getting that experience already. Um, STEM curriculum, uh, we are a part of NASEF, that's the North American Scholastic Esports Federation. Um, I actually became a fellow just to, you know, kind of help the team out and improve my own knowledge of it. Um, and what NASEF does is they, help, they, they work towards using esports um, in the classroom. Um, so I have access to probably thousands uh, of different um, lesson plans um, that, that work with science, technology, um, English, math, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a, a summer, uh, eight-week summer program uh, curriculum that I have available. Uh, I'm not sure which, you know, ones I want to implement yet, um, but we have a whole bunch of uh, scholastic esports lessons ready to go. Uh, and then streaming. Um, so streaming was not part of the plan originally when we started the esports program. Um, I wasn't sure what we could do with it, um, but kids really wanted to stream, um, and it's really become like our biggest thing. Um, so we stream uh, on Twitch, and uh, what we've been able to do is through our, through our streaming, um, you know, and the kids promoting themselves, they've been able to come, become Twitch affiliates. Uh, that means they can make money uh, from streaming. Um, so if you go to our, uh, our Twitch channel and, you know, watch a video, there's an ad that pops up, um, and those ads generate revenue for the kids. Um, there can also be sponsorships, there can be donations, um, and all that can come back to the kids where, you know, if the kids want to be, have the latest new games, um, or if they want to, you know, have lunch when they do their meetings, you know, they can do those things and um, be a self-sustaining group. Um, and what I have here is our uh, video that we submitted for why we play. Uh, an esports program in uh, part of NASEF was collecting videos on our uh, on the NASEF uh, groups for why they play video games. Uh, we can check out ours here.
I started gaming when I was about like five. When I was six years old. When I was a toddler. I was six. Even when I was three. Five. When I was five years old. My favorite game is Fortnite. Twenty. My favorite games are fighting games. Street Fighter Three Thrift Story. My favorite game is Doom Eternal. My favorite game is Arkham Knight. My favorite game is Satisfactory. I play because I want to be the best player in the world. I play because of the thrill of fighting good opponents. I'm good at fighting games and I'm uh, very competitive. The learning experience. It's fun. Um, it's fun. The reason I play video games is, is a bit of a story. In, t in June of 2022, I was diagnosed with having autism. I didn't, my whole life I had a hard time socially and being able to make friends was difficult for me. Back in 2017, I got my first Xbox. It was an Xbox Series 1S. I started playing Fortnite when it first came out, and I finally felt like I could start making friends online and everything. I still had a hard time at school talking to people and everything, but after a while, I figured, I figured out how to approach people and become friends with them, and I found people that liked the same things that I did. Even though I didn't have a reason, for those years until now as to why it was hard for me. I was able, video games helped me get through it and be able to make friends so then when I did find out, I wasn't just not able to do anything anymore. So that's why I play video games. We are the Liberators and this is why we play. So that was our why we play intro, and I had no idea about you know his autism or him having troubles until the day we shot this. Um, and then our, I wanted to talk about the pictures on this slide really quickly. So these are pictures, these are pictures from the CLL versus RPD event. Um, we, because we became Twitch affiliates, we wanted to do something to celebrate. Uh, we decided because it was pitched as an anti-violence program, we might as well, you know, celebrate by playing against the, the police, the RPD. Um, and, you know, they were gracious enough to come down and play against us. Um, but they did cheat. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you look at this, uh, the kid on the right, on the far side, that is not a kid. That is an uh, officer in training in the academy. And... Uh, the, the academy guys they brought down must have, couldn't have been over 20 years old, and they all knew how to play Fortnite, so it was a super competitive game. Uh, in the final match of the night, they were, they were able to come back from 3-1 down and beat us 5-3. Uh, to three. Um, So that was the final, final match of the night. And I don't know if you've ever beaten kids at Fortnite, but they always want reven revenge. Um, so next year, you're probably going to hear about this being like the, the biggest talked about thing uh, in gaming. Because uh, it, will, it will become a rivalry. The kids are not taking it well, losing the final match. Um, but, yep. So that's our eSports team, the Liberators. Um, and our Twitch channel is right there, twitch.tv um, slash eSports underscore Liberators. Um, if you want to support, uh, sign up and, and give us a follow. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and then we also send out notifications. We usually stream every Wednesday night. Um, we try to stream Monday nights as well. Um, but uh, more kids make it on Wednesday nights. Um, and so we'll, that will be it. Thank you for coming, uh, and then we will begin our questions. The lab is on the second floor. In this building on the second floor, yep, across from the teen center. Uh, so we, I don't have like a direct partnership with promoting at the art centers. Um, a, one of the art center leaders actually came in last week. They have been given a couple of esports computers. Um, so you know we've started working together to uh, help him get his programming going. Um, I think they're going to start uh, working towards becoming Twitch affiliates because that was something that really got the kids engaged. Uh, it got them looking at numbers how many people were watching the stream, um, where those people came from, what links they used to get there. Um, and then I can also provide him with the curriculum like I talked about, where if he wants to start teaching the kids about math or science, there are different games that you can use. Um, 
in that, you know, other people that are part of NASEP have already provided uh, the curriculum and lesson plans that work for teaching those kids, things like that. So we are going to start working with uh, um, at least one R center um, moving forward. Sure. Um, I don't do much outreach myself. We do our email blasts um, where I contribute what I have um, as far as um, promotional things like our flyers and things like that, our tournaments, um, we put those in the email blast. Are you managing the time of the um, So we do a first come, first serve. We have six esports computers. We have two other um, cyber power computers that can also run the same games. And then we have um, six. Uh, IMAX that can run, you know, Roblox and other programs, and they also run our Adobe Suites. Um, so time isn't, doesn't really come up too much. Um, if it does, it, we, I usually uh, am getting the older kids to let the younger kids play first. So if you're one of the older kids, you're going to be getting off first. Um, but usually that doesn't, we don't run into that problem. Uh, music studio time is a problem we run into. Um, I have to, uh, right now I believe we're booked like a, about a week in advance. Um, so, uh, you know, kids know they got to get to me early and tell me what days they want to come in. Um, yeah, but I, I'm, hopefully I can get something online so they can book online instead of me writing everything down. I have double booked somebody before. Um, so yeah, that, that, that is one area where we do run into a little bit of an issue. Did you? Yes. You had a question? Uh, I'll be going up there. So it's closed right now, but I'll be going up after this. Yeah, so um, we get a pretty good mix. Um, on eSports, it's more young men. Um, with the photography um, and the drawing, it's definitely more young women. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty good mix. Our all-purpose room where you can go and just play around with recording, um, green screen and piano, that's, that's more young women. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a decent mix. And they kind of follow each other, too. They're, you know, after school, if they come over as a group, they'll you know, the whole group usually comes together. Yes? Uh, yeah, so on Saturdays, um, it's open to everybody. And then before school, um, it is open to everybody. After school hours, um, we limit it to under 21. Um, usually through uh, the library. Um, the library promotion, like I said, the email blast, and then um, when we have our flyers and things that are up around the library, that's usually how people find out about it. Uh, also, asking um, for certain things. Uh, if you're around the library, asking for um, you know things to do with PDF files uh, and um, you know Photoshop or repairing files, things like that, or things that can only be done on Macs. Usually, people get sent to to my room. Um, so there's certain certain things you need help with. You're probably going to have to come to my room, and then we have our posters and flyers around that people see. Yes. Uh, most likely, yes. Yeah. So we, like I said, we have our um, Adobe suites, um, and they have the Photoshop, Premiere, all that stuff. But they also have like the basic Adobe. So if you have a PDF file that you're looking to do something to, um, the Adobe suite is where you're going to want to go because we have the the edit PDF button where you can you know make changes to PDFs that are locked, um, and then you can also convert them to other things. So you would probably you would probably get sent to my room if you if you ask that question around the library. Okay. Yes. Yes. A or after school hours. After school hours is under 21. No. So kids do try to skip school to come over. 
Um, but we do have safe to be smart around, uh, and Mr. J will will hunt them down and ask them why they're not in school. Yes. Uh, yes. So um, I have had a bunch of schools come on field trips. Um, I also work part time at a school, so I've brought my kids over on field trips before. Um, and then that, uh, with schools, we can do things like making posters. Um, we can do the esports type things. Um, like I mentioned, the music. Um, so there are a bunch of different things you can do with media with your classroom. Um, and then we also helped out, I work part time at the Helper and Education Center. Um, and they did a reading initiative um, where they wanted to get all the teachers uh, reading their favorite books. And so what we did was we made posters uh, of all the teachers reading their favorite books and then they were able to put them up and let the kids see every teacher's favorite book. Um, so there's a bunch of different things you can do with a, a classroom that comes to the lab. Anything else? Did you still have a question? Absolutely. So our, we have a bunch of laptops. Um, we also have our MIDI, MIDI uh, keyboards, our software instruments that can be attached to those laptops. Those can be moved. Um, and then our DSLR cameras, um, our camcorders uh, and cinema cameras can all be go out. Um, tripods have carrying cases. So um, like, for example, the Frederick Douglass video, that was all you know, shot out all around Rochester. Um, and we went to the mayor's office with our equipment and our lighting and stuff like that. So all of our stuff um, can be taken out. We don't have mobile esports yet, but um, you know, hopefully in the future we can have some some mobile esports where we can go into different um, environments, possibly you know kids that are you know around a McDonald house or things like that, um, and play games against those those kind those kids. Oh, it goes with me. Yep, goes with me. Yep. So like the ABC program in the summer, they make a film. Um, like I, I take the equipment out with them and we go, we go film. Anything else? Yes. Yep, we do that. We do that kind of stuff all the time. So that's similar to like the ABC program in the summer. Um, we also have the Destined for Greatness program come here in the summer. They did music therapy with a bunch of kids. So they, they got the studio. Um, they listened to music. They recorded music. Um, and they were able to discuss it and kind of use it as therapy and, you know, really talk about it in depth. And that was done, you know, right in our, right in our lab in the music studio. So if you, if you, a community program that wants to do something, you know, we just come discuss it. I can show you what we have to offer. Um, and then, you know, we can talk about what your ideas are and I can add, also add input, input um, you know, telling you your options that we have in the lab. Oh, I'm not at a rec center. So I'm, I'm here on the second floor in the digital media lab. Um, the rec center, um, and I completely blinked on the name. There is, a, there is an R center that got uh, eSports equipment that I'm going to be working with. Um, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm here at the library. All right. I think that's it. Thank you guys for coming.